Well, this is the um, Victim. It's an old Pentium 3 LifeTech notebook. It's got 192 megabytes of RAM and a 100 gig hard drive. Uh, the original hard drive was, I think, 40 gigabytes, but died quite a while ago. It could also be 20. So it was replaced with this one. It also has a DVD ROM, and the installation actually went through a different notebook and then moving the laptop's hard disk because uh, you can't install directly, it just will crash while trying to load the setup. So I'm gonna turn it on and I'm hoping it's still gonna run because it does crash quite fast, a few boots and it won't boot anymore. So let's hope it still does work now. In any case, it has internet, charge a PC card Ethernet controller from TP-Link, which you uh, can just see on the side with the network cable go through it. A few drives are missing, uh, three to be exact. The audio controller is missing, or driver at least. Um, there's also a simple PCI communications device, aka modem, which doesn't have a driver and there is an unknown device which I also really don't know what it is. I'm gonna try just open the Windows Explorer and yeah I think that's pretty much what I can do with it because it can't do very much. Might try a load up a web page but that's probably not gonna work and I will be connecting to a file server locally at least um, or even a remote one might be even more fun I'll just see depending on what I can what I do uh, while it's on so first let's see if it wants to still boot there we go it's blown quite a little and this is the BIOS you can't actually see it on the screen I think maybe just a bit I can't see it on the screen of the camera, but it should be better on seeing full screen. It takes a bit to boot. Diagnostic screen. And now it's going to try and load Windows. There we go, starting Windows. And the logo should come up. The logo might hang for a sec while starting because obviously the machine is not very capable of this. The machine also has Intel Speed Step, so although it's a 900 MHz Pentium 3, it's actually running quite a bit slower, probably around 500. It's close to 600 megahertz, um, so it's not very optimal. Uh, it's good that the hard disk is the original because it was an even slower hard disk, so this is actually quite a bit faster than it was originally. Surprisingly though, I cannot run Windows XP on this thing, and 7 actually does work, so it's quite strange that XP would not boot. But it really won't boot even if installed on the disk already. Obviously, just moving our disk from one computer to another, you could get trouble activating Windows, so it's a trial version, so you don't get that, because I think actually if this computer was supposed to give that message about not being activated anymore, it would probably crash. So, let's see. It should log in automatically. At least there's no password, so it goes in automatically. And then, uh, should see desktop. I'm seeing the cursor already. I think it might just be seen on the video as well. Still loading. Obviously, it's quite slow. Desktop uh, takes quite a bit less time. Uh, you can see a little bit of the desktop, I think, on the background of my Shema display, which is my primary computer. It's now going along again. Um, I connected the PS2 mouse because the trackpad does work, but just isn't very nice to use. The keyboard does work fairly good, so you can use internal keyboard. It will still have to install the driver for the mouse, and I hope that goes right. Because I've heard their own hat that he needed to try to install drive, it crashed. It's actually the second time I installed this thing on Windows 7. And both times I indeed installed Windows 7 on another computer and then moved the hard drive back on here. And it was installed on a um, HP notebook with a, I think, 1.8 GHz in Pentium mobile and 1 GB of RAM. So it's quite a bit faster. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we can find the Windows Explorer. And especially have it work. It should start now. It takes a bit. How do you have with this thing because of its age? So I think I'm going to leave it with just opening an FTP folder and then I'm going to shut it down because I don't think it's going to make it to open up Internet Explorer. There's the Windows Explorer.
no idea if I typed the address right. If it gives a failure, uh, we're going to just shoot it down because I do know it can access a network computer. But I have to log in and you can see the keyboard, so obviously I'm not going to do that. Surprisingly. Or actually, I could connect to it, just can't load any folders. But uh, so as such, it wouldn't help much. You would only see one folder then. That's like pretty much freezing now because I'm trying to open up the FTP protocol. Oh, wait. Something's happening. Oh, it's want to know what kind of network we have. And this is a home network. Oh, fatal error. Couldn't find a server. No, okay, so that is indeed incorrect. Could also be it still doesn't have an IP address. And especially DNS info. But, yeah, we can see it does run, but you have to have patience. I think I um, suddenly am happy this is not my primary laptop. I still want to shut it down though, so in the video, but I've got no idea how long it's going to take because at this point it's still showing the same dialogue about what kind of network we have. <coughs> so, yeah, it's. You can, however, get the test manager up, at least the menu for, for opening test manager. Now you can open up the test manager itself. There we go. CPU is, of course, full. As far as memory, it's pretty surprising. Only 137 megabytes. We still have some free, which we really had not expected to have. Applications, set network location, and task. Otherwise, it's never going to work. Yes. And now. I don't want to restart the program, I just want to close it. Well, you can see the processor usage is very high, but the memory is not even complete, so it still has some memory left. It's currently up to 142, 44, 145, so it is climbing. There we go, desktop's back, and then we can just shut down the machine. So, that's it. It's not going down. Or shoot, it takes a while as well. Funny is that before it can shut down, it first has to load up one more application, which is shutdown.exe. There we go. Logging off. Shutting down. There we go. That's it. But it did run, although um, rather slow. But at least it works. But like I said, it does crash quite fast. Uh, it's not running fully good. Um, surprisingly, especially, is that except for those three drivers I mentioned, every driver was just found out of the box without internet connection. So those are all drivers that were included with Windows itself. So it's pretty cool.